one question that I would like to ask the audience, and there's no right or wrong answer, just feel free to be yourself because I'm just being myself. Um, and we're all in this boat together. So um, I'd like to ask you, if you'd like to share, what is your fear? We won't just keep it to speaking effectively could be with relationships. It could be in our jobs. It could be with our children. It could be a lot of things. It could be with God. How do I effectively speak to God without fear? Um, because of your past, you know, there may be some experiences where in my past, maybe God was uh, the authority figure that was supposed to punish me if I didn't hold up to all the rules in the book, you know. So it could be a wide spectrum of things. So I kind of like to hear from you what your fear is or what your strength is, if you'd like to share that instead. Uh, hi, I'm Vidya. Hi. Uh, so sometimes um, I want to uh, speak something, but I, I fear that people might judge me I might go wrong or sometimes I do not find uh, clarity in my own thoughts to express it clearly. Uh, yeah, that's what stops me. Maybe uh, not having clarity in my thoughts and a fear of getting judged by people. And that is exactly a fear that I think we all have, <laughs> quite frankly. And I appreciate so much you sharing that because that openness um, is, it brings a connection, a commonality, and we look at each other, not differently, but similar, because we have the similar fears, we have similar um, feelings and thoughts that go on in our mind. So thank you. I could really resonate with that. Anyone else? I just want to share that I started Toastmasters last year and I do have a fear of public speaking, which is huge. And I actually got up there and was, uh, felt like the headlights were staring in like a deer with the headlights on. So I went through my worst nightmare, you know, not being able to say the words that I wanted to say and I got through it. So I felt completely embarrassed. And uh, but I got over it. And I'm now much more confident, not a, not very confident, but more confident than I was. So I, I managed to get through that uh, debilitating fear of speaking in front of people I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, so because I'm used to talking in small you know, teaching a meditation class or one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, yeah, so I'm keeping on going. <laughs> well, that's awesome because I've heard about Toastmasters and I've heard people that have gone to it and that it's very, very helpful um, for public speaking. And public speaking is on the list of great fears. <laughs> um, it's one of the top ones for all of us. So that's, that's really cool that you're doing that for yourself. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, my, I'll just say my only experience with public speaking is I just retired, but I was a kindergarten teacher. So every year at back to school night, you know, that would be my, <laughs> um, my one night that I love to hate, you know, but, but when I read the um, speak effectively without fear, um, I'm thinking more actually of communicating one-on-one -on -one with people with sensitive subjects that I have a hard time formulating my thoughts and I'm afraid, you know, how to, how to deliver something that, you know, maybe I want to um, talk about a boundary. Those are very hard for me. And I don't want to hurt the other person, but I want to say it right. So that's when all the 
I'm not sure. Um, not that it's easy for me, I mean, at all to talk in a large group, but I'm more focused on, since I'm not in that venue, more focused on uh, communicating one on one with somebody and not have fears of being rejected or being reactive come up. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, totally. Thank you for sharing. Does anybody else want to share? I'll share. Um, so my biggest fears are similar to those who have already shared. And in addition, I, I fear being harshly criticized, mm -hmm. um, ostracized, and misunderstood. Thank you for sharing that. So I think that we are all in the same boat together because what I'm hearing is fear that I'm not going to be good enough. I'm not going to match up. I'm not going to be clear enough in the message and that I'm afraid I'm having anxiety and I feel like I'm going to freeze. Um, these are very common anxieties or fears to do with speaking. So I think what I'm going to do is talk about how from a spiritual uh, solution, we can um, be okay with ourselves, regardless of what other people think. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it really is I'm the only one in my mind. <laughs> my thoughts are, are mine. So what other people are thinking, I really don't know. And so sometimes I'm projecting what I fear is from maybe like fear of rejection, fear of insecurity, fear of looking good, fear of being right, um, being accepted, being loved. Um, and so how do I remain calm and cool when all these thoughts are flooding through my mind? And one of the things that has really benefited me is simply Raj Yoga meditation, where I turn my focus on myself and I give to others but the first person I have to give to is myself. I have to love myself. I have to believe in myself and learn that it's okay if I make a mistake. It's okay if I even fail. And I don't have to call it, I'd call it failure because, like I said, all is well and all is good. And I've learned more from my mistakes than I have my successes, honestly. Because mistakes make us more humble. You know, we have to reflect and see what it is that I can learn from what it is that I'm doing and grow from that. Just treat it like a growing experience. I'm learning. And that's part of loving myself. I'm not, I am an eternal soul, but I'm not complete yet. I'm still working on myself. And I like to tell myself that I'm a work in progress. And so I've grown a lot in eight years in meditation because it's a di different, um, you know, being a BK is, is a role. It's, um, in, but uh, a soul is a soul, right? We are souls. We are spirits. We are love, we are peace, we are happiness, and we are very loved by the highest being of all, who is the mother and the father of us souls. And so when I look at you and I see you as my brothers and sisters, then I see you as one big family, no matter where you're from, no matter if you're in Canada or you're in um, 
you know, um, California or wherever you are, we're all in this together and we're all learning on this path of spirituality. And we're learning more about ourselves through uh, meditation, through the courses of soul consciousness. Um, and I don't know if all of you have taken the courses. I think you probably have. Um, I recognize some of you from class. And um, and so we're on this journey. And day by day, uh, we're reminded of who we are. And when we can speak with meaning and we give, then I'm not so concerned about like getting back from you. Because in the morning, if I have some really powerful thoughts about myself and who I am and who I am in humanity and sending out good wishes for all of humanity, the whole world, and connected with the highest being of all, taking power from him, drawing, drawing in that energy and that light. And we know that God loves us. I know that we feel this and we know. And so God says in the teachings that you are my sweet child. You are my sweet child. So he's already happy with me as I am right here in this moment. But of course, I'm on this journey and I'm, I want to become the best. Not the best like in a worldly sense but the best of my own self until I take my last breath. Because why would I be on a spiritual path except to improve and to grow? And so to speak effectively without fear is to really be in acceptance of who I am. I'm not going to give you any big skills like a worldly um, uh, lecture or, or psych my psychological degree of you know, giving you one, two, three on how to treat anxiety, um, unless you want me to, but I'm going to come more from the spiritual, um, version of things. And when I speak the truth, I really don't have to worry about what I'm saying. It's the truth and the truth has its own power. It's when I get off on my own thoughts or what I've been told by others that I get myself distracted and I get myself off to side scenes that take me away from the message. They take me away from myself and they take me away from my higher power. So as long as I can remain calm and cool and have meaningful thoughts and stay connected to my inner being stay connected to who I am and I'm not trying to look good and worry about what you think about me, then I'm being true to myself and I'm being connected to my higher power because I am a being of light right here. And God is incorporeal. So he's a bodiless soul. He is a being of light. And when we are connected that way, we're on the same wavelength. And so he can work through me. But if I am so caught up in how I'm looking, how I'm presenting myself, what you're going to say about me after this is over, then I've really stepped out of my boat, you know, and I'm sinking. So I really need to keep my spiritual eye open and use the wisdom of spirituality that I have learned in Raja Yoga. One of the things about speaking effectively is to not invoke peacelessness in another one's mind. And how do we do that? We have to practice the wisdom that we learn through the teachings. And it can be your own spiritual teachings um, that you're reading in the morning or you're, you know, imbibing on your own. Um, but what I, I think what I want to say is that when I look at you in your eyes and I see that light and I see that vulnerability and that openness, 
then it helps me to uh, connect. And then we connect through our thoughts and through our feelings. We open up our heart to one another because our heart is where we feel. And so I have to really be open to allowing you to know who I am on a very intimate way, not that through sharing on my life, but to really share my heart, to really share my heart and to give you love and not worry about getting love back. And this is, when I think like this, I have these pure thoughts towards you, then I'm not going to invoke peacelessness into your mind because I'm coming from a peaceful state. And then through those thoughts, then it will only be peace that is given out. So that's one thing, is not to put poison in anyone's mind. We talk about in Raja Yoga that our mind is a garden. And so we cultivate flowers in our garden. We cultivate and plant good seeds, which are our thoughts. And through that, we give out words that are uplifting, tender, gentle, and kind, and meaningful, and true. And if we get off that path, then hopefully we'll catch it and get back on the path, or someone will gently kind of guide us back, or God will kind of give us a touching and go, hmm, <laughs> you know. Um, because God is our father, he's our teacher, and he's our guide. And if my mind is open to that, and my mind believes that, then somehow I will get a touching through something I read, or something someone says, and then I'll get this feeling that, oh, yeah, I was a little bit off the path, and this is where I need to grow. So these are all good things. Speaking effectively means that I'm growing and I'm loving myself and I'm encouraging myself. I'm believing in God's support. I'm believing that he is my companion. He's my friend and he's not judging me. And someone said that they're afraid of judgment. And you know what? People do judge. This is true. And so there is another saying in Raja Yoga that if I get praised one week, I have to be ready to take defamation in another time because things change, human beings change. And so nothing will stay the same. So the only one I can really put my dependency on and my um, really be guided is the one the highest, the who's ever pure, never changing, consistent, stable, who only has the best for me. And it's not that someone may be intentionally trying to hurt me, but maybe they think they're right. And so we don't argue, we don't get into debates because that's tit for tat and that, that puts peacelessness in someone's mind. Um, so these are things that I've learned in the program of spirituality and Raja Yoga. And also I've learned that to be a lotus flower is a symbol for purity of thoughts, detachment, being loving, is to really remain unaffected. So instead of being influenced by others, um, then I influence the atmosphere or I influence your mind by just sending you good wishes and pure thoughts and, and using meaningful words. I'm not saying that I always do it. Sometimes I do fall off the path. Um, sometimes I chit chat a little bit too much. Sometimes I don't hold that essence 
but I'm learning and I'm growing and I'm getting better at it. If I just keep on the path, I keep trying. I don't give up. Don't ever give up on yourself. You know, um, if you fall, then you just dust yourself up and you get off, you get back up, you know, like if I don't eloquently deliver the message tonight, there's something that I will learn and I will grow and I will get a little bit better next time. So I go back to all is good. It will be better. All is well. All is well. And I really, um, uh, I think that I want to um, touch on in Raja Yoga that um, we become free. Why do we meditate? Why did we come to meditation? For me, I wanted to be free. Um, I uh, won't go into my story too much, but I'll just touch on this is my 10th anniversary from uh, being uh, diagnosed with leukemia, a very serious form of leukemia. And I only had a 30% chance of living. Um, and so I feel that I am here to learn and grow. And so I want to do that till my last breath. And, and um, so part of meditation and Raj Yoga is for me to become self-sovereign for me to become independent of what is going on out there and to be the king, the master of what's going on in here, what's going on here and what I'm looking at, what I'm taking in, um, what I'm focused on, where is my attention going? These are things that um, when I listen then I speak more effectively. And so I think that speaking effectively without fear is also being willing to listen and being open to taking, um, I don't know if I would call it criticism, but being open to taking loving guidance. Um, when I feel someone is doing it for my best benefit, not to hurt me. And so the more that I can enjoy the journey and the more enthusiastic and courageous I can be, the more I'll be effective as a speaker gradually, gradually. And I take it a drop by drop. I don't say to myself, oh, wow, you have to be so eloquent, <laughs> like right now, Um you know, I just take it gradually as it comes. I stay in the moment and I do the best I can to my ability at the time. And that works for me. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on is the closer that I can be to God while I'm speaking, remembering that I am this light and that I am not this body and that I'm separate from this body, then that gives me that connection that takes me easily to my home, to my home beyond this material realm where I'm worried and I'm upset, I'm anxious, I'm hearing this, I'm hearing that. No, I stay under the shade of the tree of where the seed is sitting right beside me. I like the two trees. There's a positive tree and there's a negative tree. And when I stay sitting under the positive tree, then I remain free and I remain able to fly, fly beyond to my home in my mind. It's not that I'm leaving my body. I'm not leaving my body. I'm in my body and I haven't left my body yet. But through my thoughts and my feelings, I'm able to connect with God because God tells me every day who he is. And when I understand the qualities of who God is and what he's doing for me and how he loves me so much and loves all of you <clears throat> and that we all have the same qualities, all the same powers, then I'm able to connect easily because I know who he is because he describes himself to me every day. So these things um, help me to be 
effective in my relationships at home. Um, I'm retired, so I don't have to worry about speaking eloquently at a job anymore. <laughs> and I worked with juvenile delinquents, so I probably couldn't have hurt them anyway <laughs> too much. <laughs> so, um, so, but I, what I do have to be concerned about is we call them our old scars, our old sun scars. They're like the scars on our soul, <clears throat> you know, those old little hurts. And those old little bumps in the road, they come out of nowhere and we think they're gone and it comes up again because we haven't like gotten rid of it completely. And so this is where in my home, I have to speak more effectively. Why? Because these people that I live with, they know me really well and they know what my buttons are. <laughs> they know what triggers me. And there's some old resentments and there's some old hurts. And so how do I speak effectively? Well, sometimes, like I said, I just have to listen. I have to take it because on some level, I know some of it is the truth. There may be blaming going on and I don't have to buy into that, but I don't need to argue about it. I need to let that person just say their, their peace. They have that right and respect them unless they're being abusive and I have to have a boundary drawn and then maybe go away until they can talk to me more peacefully. But if they're saying things about me that are hurtful, then I don't have to allow that to come in. Because sometimes people that hurt, they hurt others. So I can always set my boundary, which means have my orb of light around me and be thinking of God and saying, what can I learn from this? How can I understand this person better and be more effective in their life? And then also to be the lotus flower is to be detached and loving. And so this is a relationship in this life. And this is my role as a mother or as a wife, but it won't be forever. It'll be temporary. But when I'm a guest and a trustee in my home, then I can be a helper. I can be a helper. I'm, and how can I, how can I help in this situation? How can I just love this person exactly as they are? Isn't that what God does for us every day? God knows all my little bumps and my, all, my little blemishes. And yet he loves me exactly where I am right here in this moment. And so the more I can fill myself up, in the morning through my meditation and my study. And that can be for any kind of spiritual thoughts or spiritual um, something that is of meaning to you that gives you that positivity and gives you like that anchor for the day. Then I'm more effective in my speech to, with others. I'm more loving and more uh, accepting in the moment. I'm less able, I'm less uh, apt to enter into any kind of conflict that's not only going to put poison into my mind, but also will invoke peacelessness into your mind. There's another saying in the, in the Raja Yoga that we don't take in sorrow because what you speak to me, they may be harsh words and they may be unkind, but if I take it in, then what do I do to my mind? I clutter my mind and I dirty my mind. And with meditation, I'm trying to clear my mind. I'm trying to stay peaceful. And so I'm defeating myself. So we make our mind our own best friend, or our own enemy, our own best enemy. And I prefer to be the hero in my story and not the villain. So those are just some things that I've learned um, about speaking effectively with others in relationships. And um, I think that just staying light is not being worried and not being upset and just really loving yourself. I don't know if you have ever done an exercise, but when I had um, 
cancer and I was in treatment, um, <laughs> you wouldn't even believe what I looked like. I looked nothing physically like I do now, believe me. I looked like a little rat. I had no hair, no eyebrows, no eyelashes. I weighed like 112 pounds. I mean, I was just, you know, um, pretty, not very attractive to look at. But what I was taught before Raja Yoga by a chaplain was look in the mirror, look in the mirror and look between your eyes, look behind your eyes, look into your eyes and see that this body is not you. And that was such a powerful exercise that she gave me. And so it was easy for me in Raja Yoga to understand that, yes, I am a soul behind the eyes because I had looked at myself so many times in treatment and said, you know, just put a smile on your face and go out there and you don't care what people think. Obviously, they're going to see you as a cancer patient. But you love yourself and you're getting well, you're healing and you're so lucky. So don't feel sorry for yourself and be, be uh, strong for someone else that's starting off on their journey of getting treatment. So these are the other things that I've learned is we use our experiences in life to not feel sorry for ourselves, but to actually be a witness for someone else who's going through something similar, either in their own life or with a family member. And this can be a very effective way of speaking. We don't have to just speak through words. We speak through our vibrations. I know that sounds strange. We speak through our feelings. We speak through our actions and our thoughts. And I don't know if you've ever been had of the experience of being with someone and they're speaking so sweetly to you. Their words are just so syrupy and sweet. And yet behind it, you feel that the vibration is off. Now, this is not matching up, so we need to be inside out. What I feel inside needs to be conveyed on the outside. It needs to be the truth. So what I am inside is what should be matching up on the outside. We've all said things and tried to, you know, oh, hey, how's it going? You know, and then you're like, I don't really don't like that person. Um, that is a worldly way of dealing with people. And so we have to change our thoughts and spirituality. Everyone is a gift because why? Because we're all brothers and sisters of the one family of God. We are all in the same boat trying to, you know, just get through those waves that are up and down, that trying to throw us off balance so that we can have a smooth ride and support one another, be there for one another. So speaking is also through the eyes. We call it drishti. So much can be conveyed through our eyes and our face because whatever is going on in my mind is conveyed through my face. I was just checking to see what time it is so I wouldn't run over. And whatever is conveyed in my eyes is either pure or impure. And so that's a very interesting way of thinking about things. So I'm either giving you feelings of peace through my eyes, or I'm giving you some kind of dis-ease because I'm feeling a dis-ease inside. I'm feeling uncomfortable. So when I remember that I am a being of light and I'm a powerful, pure soul, I'm giving myself affirmation of these, the truth. And I remember that this is the position that I am in, that I'm here in this body and I'm the master of this body and that I am the one that's self-sovereign, independent of whatever is going on out here. It's like I have that orb of light, that boundary around me that says, you're okay. It's okay. All is well. All is well. I love me. Sometimes we just have to tell ourselves these things. And so are there any questions or would I'd like to hear from you to kind of see if there's other things that you would like me to touch on or if I'm covering what it is you came here to get because I want to 
um, you know, make sure that that you're feeling okay about things. Anybody? <laughs> I'm here, I'm listening. I'm just lying down. I've had a long day. So excuse me for lying down here. Uh, that's the beauty about that's the beauty <laughs> of have to be in any position. <laughs> So um, it's lovely the way that you're talking. It's beautiful. And uh, for me, I think I need to know deeper that God really does love me because there's a part of me that blocks that, that thinks, well, I'm not worthy enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not there yet. And, uh, you know, it's an undercurrent. It's a subconscious almost where I know that it's there. It's like, that feeling that when I study every day for many years, <laughs> I've been studying for many, many, many years, um, and been on this journey for a long time. But you know, to really get that deep belief that God does, and the, the one way that I do get it is because I'm a parent, and I know that as a parent, you love your children and how, how you love your children, and you don't want them to do things that will cause them sorrow. Uh, that's just so inherent in being a mother. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what I want to deepen, is knowing that I think I love despite the, all the imperfections. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Um, that that uh, resonates with me also. And I've really had to um, make effort in my meditation to open up. And for me, that was scary at times because I didn't know what was gonna come out of that, you know, subconscious, <laughs> what, what all is in there, you know? And I remember having a memory uh, it came out and I went deep in my meditation and this, it just flooded me. And I could almost come to tears right now, but there's a saying again, that keep the past in the past and heal and move on. We have to move forward and I can't do anything about it, but it it's down in there. And um, it was along that feeling of, oh gosh, how could I have done that? <laughs> you know? And um there was such a feeling of shame when it came up. So I, I said, okay, God, I just opened myself up. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> you know, I'm, I might've been like four years into meditation. I don't know, four or five. So I just said, okay, God, I just open up to you. And obviously, you know about this. So obviously I just give it to you. And it just like, it was such a powerful experience and I felt so much love from God um, that I, it allowed me to trust him more that yes, I had to be accountable for things and I have to be responsible and I have to realize that yes, in the past I have hurt others through my own selfishness. Um, but that God loves me and he's teaching me and he's guiding me and he keeps loving me and he teaches me how to love myself and he teaches me how to let it go and accept that everything is exactly the way it's meant to be. Now, that sounds weird, but there's a, there's a teaching in Raja Yoga that we are on a destiny and everything is working forward it's all working to the good that we're going towards if we just stay on the path so it's because um we were spiritually bankrupt and we were looking for something or seeking something maybe we listened to messages from others that were not the truth and it took us down you know it took us down but we're not to blame others but now we're responsible we're in raja yoga we're learning the teachings we're learning about our path, who we are, and now we know that that's not true. 
So then we can learn a different way. We can learn the true way because God is teaching us. And so that is helping to empower me, to help me to heal because meditation is all about healing. It's really healing. And so, but I have to get real. And I think that is so awesome that you are really being honest about your feelings because if I can't be honest, then how can I let God in do his thing? You know, how can I let the sunlight of the spirit in? I'm cutting, I'm blocking. No, I have to open up. He already knows everything anyway. It's me that's getting in my way. <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, I can really identify with all those feelings. It's, it's, uh, um, I think that we have to celebrate new beginnings. That's what I think we have to do. Each moment is a new beginning and we celebrate that. We celebrate that right now, right here together. And what does worthy mean? It means that I'm becoming competent. I'm becoming competent. I'm becoming a skilled spiritual warrior. You know, I'm becoming the lotus flower. That's my weapon. Um, you know, there's other weapons that we have, the powers, we have the powers to face, face ourselves sometimes and um, admit what our defects are and our weaknesses and, and, um, and know that those are just from being spiritually depleted. It's not that we were bad. We bought into misconceptions and now we have to burn them. We have to burn those misconceptions misconceptions and we have to study the truth and keep practicing the truth in our life i love you i love you i love you you're all my brothers and sisters i love you it means i love myself and when i can see all of you then i can love you spiritually and i can accept you no matter what you say to me i still give you love because I know that if you say something mean to me, I know that that is not the true you. That's not the essence of who you are. It's a front for something else. And so um, I think when we come from that state, we position ourselves like that, we're more effective in our relationships with each other. And I just came back from a retreat a week ago. And I can tell you that it was the best retreat I've ever been on. And I can't really tell you why, except that there was just this speaking effectively without fear, opening up, um, accepting differences, but complimenting one another, not saying you're right or you're wrong. It's just being appreciative of one another and complimenting one another. So it's compliment like appreciate C O M P L I M E N T and complimenting one another means that I have my gift and you have yours C O M P L E M E N T. So when I stay in my gift and I appreciate your gift and we become a team, we become not looking at each other's differences, but looking at the similarities. And that brings us into harmony and unity. So that's another thought I had. <laughs> but I really love what everyone is saying. And um, I think that's why we resonate so well with Raggio, because it brings us back to the truth of who we are, who we were born to be, and who maybe we got off track because of different sanskaras. And so we're on the path now and we're getting well and we're getting healthy and we're healing inside. And we're choosing more loving thoughts and we're removing the weeds from the inside of our mind and we're burning, we're burning at the root 
those things that are poisoning our soul. And maybe we're not even aware they're there. But over time, if we open up enough, we allow those poisons to rise and they just dissolve. And then the true beauty of who we are, it just rises and comes out because it was always there. It was just covered up with all those layers. Yeah, that's lovely. Do that. <laughs> I loved everything that you say. Uh, you know, the you started out saying by saying that uh, I am the only one who lives in my mind. That's really something uh, that churns something deep because then I just have to deal with that one that is in me. Uh, and uh, yeah, Raj Yoga is the only one where I don't have to say that, uh, uh, you know, feeling guilty. I know my weaknesses. That guilt is not there in Raj Yoga meditation. You know, other things uh, in the world, when you feel guilty, when you accept I have defects, that is still a hidden uh, you know, trauma inside. But Raj Yoga, the more you know, the more you know yourself, you know that that's uh, just uh, not, it's not about the guilt, it's about growing up. You, once you know yourself, then uh, no question of guilt. Well, I was a child, as a child, I did this, so I now I'm grown up, so I know more. Yeah, I love it. I, uh, all, everything that you say, you know, accepting yourself, uh, connecting with your true self, and then behind you is the supreme power. Beautiful. Bringing up the topic of guilt, um, Sister Denise, uh, Denise Lawrence, uh, meditation teacher, I'm sure you've all heard her. Um, I know. Um, she she says, when you feel guilty, just feel guilty for maybe no more than five minutes, not even five minutes. Let it go. Because guilt depletes my energy. And so it's self-defeating. What I'm trying to do in Raggio, I'm trying to accumulate positive energy. And then I go and <laughs> I withdraw. I take a withdrawal. I get myself into debt, you know. Um, so it's, she said, guilt is, there's nothing you can really do about the past. You know, it's just grow from it and try not to do it again. That's all. Learn from it. That's it. And, and that, I really like the Raja Yoga that we're in a classroom and this is a school and that we're on this earth playing our parts, going through whatever we go through with our roles and that we're learning, we're growing. And if we've made mistakes, then we just um, use the powers and we use our virtues to overcome the weaknesses. And so that our mind stays clean and fresh. And we're doing this from moment to moment as present as we can be, sometimes we forget. That's why we get reminded through spiritual words and studies, you know, wake up, wake up, wake up, open your third eye, open it up, <laughs> wake up. <laughs> you know, you fell asleep for a minute. <laughs> so using that wisdom and putting it into practice, it really does work, you know, but we each have to experiment for ourselves because we're all unique souls and we all have our hurts that are unique to our own path our own journey so i always am like we're not cookie cutting here <laughs> you know we're unique souls we all have the same qualities and the same father and the same you know we're all from the same um humanity the same world beyond we will return to that world with god but we each have our own unique personality. So 
we have to experiment for ourselves. And uh, that builds our faith, really. It builds our understanding. And it, when it works, we're like, hey, okay, I get it now. <laughs> So I love that. I just let, let me just review the things that I have really um, heard is that um, we're in this together and we're overcoming our weaknesses. Um, we're feeling better about ourselves. We're becoming more competent. Um, we're learning through Raj Yoga and meditation and through study how to overcome the feeling of unworthiness by being more competent in life, by feeling more grown up, <laughs> you know, um, uh, through Toastmasters, you know, and that's an awesome thing right there. It takes bravery to walk into Toastmasters. Hey, use all the tools you can to be more, to overcome the fear of speaking um, and to learn those skills and to practice uh, I think I, I just want to touch on one thing that came up ego, you know, it was explained to me by a, a teacher of many years that ego is not always a bad thing that ego was formed because it's those layers and masks that we put on to protect ourselves. And they were defenses that we used, especially if we were being traumatized or harmed in some way. Um, and so ego, unfortunately, edges God out, though. So then we have to slowly, slowly allow those masks to fall off one by one. And the more we understand God and the more we understand ourselves and why that ego is there to protect us, then the more we are able to accept that it's not a bad thing. It's not a sin. It's something that we need to let go of slowly and gradually so that the truth of who we are, the beauty of who we are can emerge and be that light, be that bright light and I like what Marianne Williamson said. This really stood out to me when I came into Raj Yoga. Um, there is a saying that we are afraid to show our light to the world because the world doesn't always want to see it. Sometimes people that are dirty inside, they don't always want to see that light because it makes them, it reflects back on them that, oh, I feel dirty inside but still be that light, keep being that light. Because even though they're afraid, you're st we're still called upon to be that light and to be a bright light, not just a light, be the brightest light we can be. And so um, when we are the light, light will dissolve the darkness. We don't have to worry about the darkness of this world because light is more powerful. God is more powerful. And we are very powerful souls. We just don't realize. We don't know what our capacity is. We have no idea. You know, they call up, they talk about numbers, you know, number wise. Well, I don't know what my capacity is. I just strive to do the best I can. And I don't worry in a worldly sense that I want this title or I want this position. No, I'm just trying to be the best person until my last breath. And then I go home. I have to face God. So um, that's something the ego is. Uh, I'm not scared of the ego anymore. I have taken the ego down a step at a time. If I step back into the ego, it's because I'm afraid. I'm afraid of of maybe you're looking at me a certain way or you're judging me. Judging is a big deal for me because that was done in my family. And it's because they came from judgmental parents. It's not something they did to hurt me. It's because they were judging themselves and they were hard on themselves. So we only can give what we got, you know, and now we're getting the best from God himself. 
And so we don't need to carry around those messages that are depleting and we need to just stay neutral and be okay with whoever is around us, stay balanced and be loving and give them the purest wishes that we can give from our heart and give them the best through our eyes and our thoughts. And the responsibility is not ours, it's God's. They're God's children. And he'll do what's best for them. I can only be a helper if I open myself up to his light. But I'm not responsible for this world. This is God's world. This is creation. So I'm just not that powerful. I'm just a, I'm a light in the world. I'm not the light. <laughs> That's probably the biggest thing that will edge God out is when I think that I am the light. No. <laughs> Yes. It's very subtle, right? This, the ego is just a subtle thing. It's this little thing you like always be aware of. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, yeah. yeah, it creeps up on us. But mm -hmm. it's because it reminds us that, oh, I'm not quite well in that area. I have <laughs> more growth to do. I haven't quite burned that to the root, you know, burned it just completely. Yeah. It'll take on another form as I've if I've burned it completely, it won't be there. It'll dissolve. If we get rid of our ego completely, we'll be comatine and we won't be here. <laughs> we'll be angels. <laughs> and what is so cool, I don't, I don't know why I'm saying this, but it got more real for me. It has to be real for me. But when I was in Madaban, there were seniors there and I like to talk to people. I like to learn. And I was clueless when I was there. I was maybe a year old. You know, I was just like a deer in headlights, you know? And so I was just kind of like, okay, well, what about this? And what about that? And I feel this way. And should I be feeling this way? And what, you know? And I, I do deep meditation. I feel a little messed up now. Is that normal? So I was really trying to like, in the, in the cafeteria ask, you know, what, is this normal? You know? And what I, it was a teacher from London and she shared with me that it was probably the best thing she could have ever said to me is that, do you know that some of these seniors were not always like this? A couple of them were angry. A couple of them were like this, but she's like an angel now because she transformed. If she did this Raja yoga, she took the teachings and she put them into practice. And we have seen her over the years evolve into this person and her character is completely different but she wasn't always like that so you can change these that's a testament to it works and I thought that was probably the best piece of wisdom I I left with like because I had some anger and I needed to know can I do this does this really work and she said yes these people really have changed. They really are becoming angels. And I was like, wow. Okay. Then that's, that sounded real to me. So, yeah, I didn't want to, I just couldn't believe that they came in here and they were just perfect, you know? <laughs> so that helped me a lot. Anyway. I've, I've spoken enough, so I'd like to hear more from you if you want to say something or you want to just share anything about speaking effectively without fear, how you do that um, in your daily life so that we can inspire one another because I'm not the teacher. I'm a student. We're all students, and so... I like what Daddy Junkie says. I'm a godly student to the day, day I leave this body. And that humbles me and makes me my right size because I don't know everything. <laughs> I don't. And I may have a PhD, but you know what they say about a PhD? It's just piled higher. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say the word that they use. <laughs> 
but half the time you're like people are calling on you they see that degree and then you're like inside you're going if you only knew if you only knew <laughs> like I'm gonna have to think of the answer as I'm going down the hallway <laughs> I mean it's just you know we're all human beings and we're all we're all more alike than we are um not alike. so I just like to I I don't know I'm asked to put my degree on there but I don't really like think of myself as a PhD I think of myself as a as a Raja yogi trying to do the best I can daily to improve on my study skills and understand this knowledge better and deeper so that I can get healed that's my journey now and I don't even like to think of myself as a cancer survivor because that puts me in the past. I like to think of myself as that was something that happened that helped me to grow too in a different mm -hmm. direction. Mm -hmm. And it helped me to uh, get better perspective on things and to know that, yeah, I am, I am the soul in this body and this body will someday not be able to go any further. <laughs> and I don't know. I never thought about death at the age of 55, but I was forced to think about it. So I'm not as afraid of it. I still get fear, but I'm not as afraid. So I'm working on that too. And that gives us that feeling of freedom, freedom from um, other people's opinions of us, freedom of what's going on in our mind where we perceive that they might be thinking about us. Sometimes mm. I think myself more than I need to. <laughs> you know? And I don't <laughs> know what you're thinking about me, but I'll think I know what you're thinking about me. <laughs> you know, so it's so it's so interesting when you really think about it that God could give us these teachings that will help us understand ourselves better and understand each other so that we can live harmoniously in a world that is exactly the way it needs to be at this time. And when I can understand that, then I don't need to fix it. I don't need to control it. I just need to let go and accept. And that makes it much easier to live without fear yeah yes yeah. because everything is going exactly the way it needs to go and it's like i said it's it's god's world we're just down here scrambling around like little ants sometimes but <laughs> <laughs> but uh he loves each and every one of us I don't know if you it's a Christian movie but it is very powerful it is so powerful it is called the shack and there is an episode where he cannot tolerate thinking of God as the father. So he makes the mother. So it's a female playing the part. And she says, um, this is how God sees everyone. And they had the light lit up. And so they were like little lights. And she said, that's how God sees each and every one of you. Even though you hate your father, that's how God, he sees the purity and the, the love. And he was able to see his father and look into his eyes and his father said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And so it was soul to soul. And the father had, even though they were showing the soul and the body, the father had departed, you know, he had departed from the body. And it was just her giving this experience, which she was supposed to be God, um, of uh, this experience of soul to soul. Yeah. And, this, and he was able to give. Like, forgiveness is forgiving. I never thought of it like that. But when I truly forgive, 
I truly want everything for you that I would want for me, which is peace, yeah. and love, and happiness, and bliss, and a good connection with God. Yeah. Um, and when I truly can feel that, then I've forgiven. So it's it's an awesome journey. <laughs> It's a little bumpy at times, but we have each other to support and guide one another. And we have God to give us these um, reminders of how precious we are to him, her, friend, companion, whatever. <laughs> that highest being that lives beyond, that's always looking at mm -hmm. us. It's hard to understand sometimes, you know, but when we meditate on a deep level, we can feel those vibrations. And then we know that, yes, God is, is with us in a different way than my childhood believes. Yeah. And he won't hurt me. He won't harm me. I harm myself, but he won't harm me. And I only harm myself through my thoughts. <laughs> so <laughs> take out those weeds. <laughs> Remove those weeds. Okay. Well, um, Vino, do you want to say anything else? Or um I I would just before um I would just like to add one thing. Before you lay your head down tonight, reflect on one positive thought for yourself. Just one very powerful thought for only you. Only you. Okay. I don't know why that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's really powerful. Speak without fear. <laughs> I think that the wonderful thing about this Raj Yoga meditation is that we only have our this inner little laboratory. You know, we've got this little world in here, and we know that we have the tools to make us ourselves so happy and so intoxicated we know right we're learning this it's, that's what i love about it so every day we have this chance to an experiment through the day so we don't have to worry about anybody else just have to do ourselves and i, I really love that about and of course we have a sweet heavenly dad <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, that's all I want to say. And it was beautiful talk. And thank you so much. It's lovely to hear you. And you have a beautiful, angelic energy. It's like a, oh, so sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's too. Thank you. And thank you, all of you, because each one of you shared really deep points. And I think you're very open about, um, you know, what it is we're all going through and what it is you're going through individually and how we can inspire one another and be kind to one another and really support one another. That's where else do you get that in this world, you know, where you can be open and free and people aren't looking at you like that's kind of weird. <laughs> so um, we can just, help other people get in touch with themselves and be true to themselves by being ourselves. That's all we have to do is just be ourselves. Yeah. True. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I really thank enjoyed you. this evening and, um, and I really enjoyed um, hearing each one of you and your points. It was very inspiring to me. Be before we close, I would like thank to you. I, Sister Vidya, to uh, I want to ask her if 
she had the initial question and I want to make sure that she got uh, something out of this talk. And if there's any question, you know, you can speak. Uh, no, I think uh, she answered my question. So it was about uh, getting judgments by uh, or getting judged by others. So she explained that you just have to be yourself and not think about what others are thinking. Just be true to yourself. And the other thing was about fear. So I think she explained that if we meditate uh, in the morning, then we have uh, a better control or anchor on our day. And I think that helps uh, to create clear thoughts and, you know, put yourself across more uh, with more clarity. So I think meditation uh, is the answer for that. So yeah, she did answer my questions and it was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Brother Vino, for um, showing up and helping with Zoom. And he does so much service. I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning like just like uh, all of us. I was, uh, you know, uh, like everybody shared, I was just like you all. Um, and I have, the more I know myself, I have known myself through meditation, the more clearer I became and more confident I became. Now I don't have to worry about showing anybody or taking artificial support. I can speak one or two words, but I know my vibration speaks better louder than my words. I may not be good in a language, but I can surely communicate. So, yes. So, Sister Vidya, if you, uh, I don't know if you are, uh, if you have had a course, a meditation course, if not. No, uh, this is actually my first session uh, with uh, Brahma Kumaris, the very first session. So, I am following uh, Brahma Kumari uh, Shivani, BK Shivani, a lot on YouTube. And I just love her. So somehow uh, somebody mentioned to me that um, uh, there is a center in Milpitas. And then I was uh, looking up uh, for more centers. And, you know, so I found this retreat center today, uh, Anubhuti. And then I was just looking up events. And uh, this was this is like first event with uh, Brahma Kumaris. And I'm so grateful that I came across it. And uh, I'm sure uh, this is like a new beginning of new journey with you guys. And uh, yeah, I have registered for Raj Yoga uh, meditation course. I think it's starting on from 15th June or some, I don't remember the date. I think I will have to check. But I have registered for that. And nope. yeah, yeah okay. it's wonderful. Well, it's, well, it's a grace I'm receiving from the divine. I can see that. It's not a coincidence. Yeah, not a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And welcome. And we hope that you keep coming back. So, yeah, absolutely. So learn more about yourself. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'll keep sharing my experiences more and more. Yeah. It was a wonderful session. I'm already, I was very tired after coming back uh, from work. But now it feels like my day has started again and I've got a lot of energy, positive energy, just uh, looking at you guys and hearing about your experiences. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. It's a wonderful big family, which is kind of amazing. You know, I'm yeah. going to be soon and I'll be with some family members, but I have, I'm so excited to be meeting them. And uh, yeah, it's just so wonderful to be able to go anywhere in the world and know that you'll be um, welcomed and your family. It's quite uh, unique and special. Thank you. Big, big welcome. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice evening. Thank you so much, Kim. Appreciate it. Om Shanti.